All right, everybody, so today we're going to read, or we're not going to read, we're going to talk about The Book Thief, all right? The Book Thief by Marcus Zuzek, Zuzek, and I'm going to just read real quick the uh, book synopsis. So let's see, where is the synopsis? It should take two seconds. Ah. Ah. How do you get to this book synopsis? Is it over here? Is it over here? Yeah, I should have done this before. Alright, let's see. Oh, it's not even there. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, Lisa Memminger is only nine years old when she is taken to live in the Hubber Hubberman's uh, a foster family on Himmel Street in Mulching, Germany in late th 1930s. She arrives with few possessions, but among them is the Grave Digger's Handbook, a book she stole from her brother's burial place. During a um, during the years that Liesel, or Liesel, I don't know how they say it, I think it's Liesel, lives with the Hubbermans, Hitler becomes more powerful, life on Hummel Street becomes more fearful, and Liesel becomes a full-fledged book thief. She rescues books from the Nazi book burnings and steals from the library of the mayor. Lisa is illiterate. She cannot read when she steals her first book. But Hans Huberman uses her prized books to teach her how to read. This is a story of courage, friendship, love, survival, death, grief. This is Liesel's life, Liesel's life on Hummel Street from, um, told from Death's point of view. And that's very interesting because it's like the Grim Reaper is, or Death is the guy who tells the story. So now this movie is coming out like soon over Christmas, probably Christmas Day I think it is. What a wonderful film to come out. I'm not the happiest day of the year. Oh, it's really a happy story though, I think. Swedish. Um, you said it's from Germany, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting about this. You know, she sounds really brave to be, you know, doing all and, this stuff. I mean, and I wish you could see the movie trailer because it's just so great. The movie trailer for this is so interesting. You know, I think the way the guy wrote it is very actually poorly written. I don't think the guy was a very, I don't think it was very well written at all personally and his method of making up for that poor writing was uh, he has these like quick shortcuts to like um, introducing the characters to you like getting you to know the characters so I have like a place right here that shows that like they'll just say in like a few words just like things to know about so-and-so right which is like so-and-so is good at cooking they are into things like this. Their favorite color is red. You know, the mother was very bad at cooking. All these things. That's sort of like a, like, I don't know. That sort of is like a quick way to get someone into someone's character, you know? And he does it, he does it like so quickly. Like all in like a little tiny list. He's very quick about getting you into the characters. But it's very poorly written. I don't like the way he wrote it. I hate the way well, he wrote it. It's poorly written, but the way that the story and what it's about is very interesting. The subject is interesting. It's a little sad, too, because it's like, you know, these are kind of losers. Well, yeah, it's Nazi Germany. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think it was going to be happy back then. Do you know that the, the, the Hitler's rise to power? They don't teach this in the schools, but there was this family called the Roth. Rothschilds, the Rothschilds, and they were a very wealthy family, and they were the ones who gave Hitler the money. He was like a pigeon, okay? He was like a stepping stone for the Rothschilds. They put him in power, uh, and I don't know why. I, d I wonder if they wanted to rule the world. So they probably backed him. They probably backed him. They had, maybe they had political interests, and they wanted, you know, power, like many great people. Back then, and they probably picked somebody who could probably, they saw that could, you know, lead them and take, take them where they wanted to go politically, so they 
with it. Um, and what a terrible choice, too, because he was a criminal, okay? And, you know, criminals are always, like, the most trustworthy people, right? And so, like, you know, of course, he went on to, like, make his, he's a sociopath. He made his child, not his child, his niece into, like, his lover. He had sex with her, you know? Like, who does that? Like, he's Uncle, Uncle Hitler having sex with his niece. Having an incestuous relationship with a young girl against her will and probably... And she was like, I don't know how old she was. She might have been, like, 16, I'm thinking. Something really ridiculously young. I mean, it's still a young girl. Too young. Yeah, psychologically scarred by that. Yeah. She's even alive today. And she's not. And then there was Eva Blom. <laughs> and I don't believe he was very good to Eva Blom. Eva, Eva Blom. Eva His, Blom. Eva Blom. And I think she was never allowed to leave. She was never allowed to show her face to the public. She was always to stay in there. And he was going to marry her. And the, Ameri and the USA Army came, or Russian Army came. And he was very close to ruling the world. And, um, yeah, they say she he, she died by poison. And his, he was supposedly killed, or he killed himself, but they never found the body. They never found Hitler's body. You they know that. that he, he, had, he also took poison. This is a rumor that I've heard. And let him see on some documentary. So he took the poison that didn't work fast enough on him. So he died of himself with a gunshot with his head. Well, they never found they never found his body. They found they have gone into like these underground catacombs, I think, or something where like they where they think they found like his skull, but they've never actually found his body. So some people think that he may have escaped through the underground tunnel of some kind. Believe it or not. Well, he never came back. And there's one thing uh, that's very interesting here, too. Because they said that he was very close to ruling the world, right? And the one thing that stopped him was the same thing that stopped Napoleon. Do you know what that was? Um, no. Why don't you tell us? It was the cold weather of the Russian, of the Russian country. He didn't, he didn't bank on the cold weather being so freaking cold. Just like with Napoleon Bonaparte, Bonaparte, you remember that, right? No. He tried to take over Russia, and the cold weather got to him first, and he, like, you know, didn't make it. And his whole army was destroyed. That's the same thing that happened with him. Yeah, he decided to go. And that's what happened, was Hitler tried to go through Russia, and you can't mess with Mother Russia, I'm going to tell you right now, because, yeah, that cold weather destroyed his army or whatever, and he lost the, all of what he had and I'm tell and they say like if he had never gone through Russia, he probably would have gone on to take over the world. <clears throat> you know what? Honestly, I gotta say this. I don't think, and I'm not I'm not gonna speak on a specific religion. I don't think God would have ever let that happen. I don't think God would have ever let. And this is my opinion. I'm just saying this. Um, God would have ever let an evil, psychotic man like that take over the world, destroy everything. I don't think it would have happened. I think it was meant to. It was meant to fail. And, um, there would be civil war. I don't know, but that's what I learned. <laughs> that's what I was taught from a, a a German, a German lady who I talked to. Um, she taught me everything I need to know about the German about Hitler. And that's where I learned that from. Did she try to make him sound like he was a great man? No, she didn't. She no, 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 no. She didn't at all. She just told me what she knew. What they, what she knew, and that was it. That was all. So okay. it was very interesting. It was very good for me because I'm writing a book about the dictator, about a dictator. And um, if you've seen my other video, you know that the story plot evolves around uh, a tyranny that's similar to Hitler. You know, and you know. Do you think that he inspired? Uh, he inspired like some of the. Um, in the book? Like, do you think, like, he, that story inspired your book in some ways? That first book right there. Say what? Do you think that that period kind of inspired you, you know, in your writing this book? 
Uh, yeah, definitely. But what really inspired me the most was Obama and the way he has become very tyrannical. So I feel like, you know, I just don't like Obama. And so I really wanted to just get rid of his ruling tyranny ways. You know, his ways are just... Well, I don't care about backlash. I feel like that this is, like, I believe what I believe, and people may dislike that, but it's not going to change what I believe in my maxim, my, you know, my internal, you know, conscience, my conscience, I don't know. So, yeah, my core, I guess you could say. So, yeah. So I have laying here, I have laying here right now The Hex, which was my first book that I wrote, and I just love it so much. I think it's so great, it's so amazing. It was not, I mean, I'm not like, I know that I didn't know what the heck I was doing when I wrote it. It, it taught me so much. I learned so much from it. And it's a very interesting book, similar, not exactly the same, but it addresses similar things about, you know, power and control and tyranny. So. And everyone should read it. It takes place in a tyrannical world, too, as well. The, the hex. And everybody, everybody Yes, world, yes, right? yes. Everybody should read it. So go and buy the book. That would be great. I'm not going to tell you to do I'm that. buy, like, two copies and... Yeah, I'm not gonna. I don't. I'm not gonna say like I want you to read it, but you. Okay, have, but I you need to read it. So there, it. you need to read it. Not that I want you to read, it, but you have to. Okay. So uh, how long has this been going on? We've been talking for a good long time here. Um. All right. So you want to say you want to say goodbye to our subscribers or our viewers? Yes. Um. Thank you guys for listening. It was great chatting with um, Charles, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, right. everybody.